Here at Shoreline, we recognize that every follower of Jesus has been given a unique set of spiritual gifts. We use our spiritual gifts class where we walk you through a special assessment that we've created. And by answering a series of questions, we can help you determine uh, how you've been uniquely gifted and then help start the conversation of where should we put those to use. Uh, we can put them to use here at Shoreline, out in our community, in our homes, at our workplaces. Join us today in the cafe. We're going to be walking through these spiritual gifts assessments together. I hope to see you there. Listen closely to these words from 1 Corinthians chapter 6. If you're a follower of Jesus, if you come to the cross and receive Jesus, these are talking about you and something amazing that's happened when you came to the cross and received Jesus. If you're not yet a Christian and you become a follower of Jesus, this is telling you what's gonna happen when you make that commitment to Jesus. The Apostle Paul writes in verse 19 of 1 Corinthians 6, do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you've received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. That was the price of Jesus' death on the cross. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. The Apostle Paul is saying that the dwelling place of God Almighty by his Holy Spirit is in you and is in you. If you've come to the cross and received Jesus, the Bible says that God no longer dwells in temples built with human hands, but he dwells in people made in the image of God. That's amazing. If that's all you heard today, that should blow your mind and you should never forget it. That when you, that when you become a follower of Jesus Christ, it's like whoosh, the Spirit of God moves in. I don't know if that sound exactly happens that way, but it's just like you become a Christian and whoosh, the Holy Spirit moves in and never leaves. And if you're not yet a Christian, understand that if you come to the cross and receive Jesus, God Almighty, in the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, he moves into you and dwells in you. And what's really interesting is that as he moves in, <coughs> excuse, excuse me, as if that weren't enough, as he moves in, he brings a housewarming gift. And God says, I'm going to live in you, so I'm going to bring a gift. It's sort of a housewarming gift. It's called a, a spiritual gift, the char charismata, the gifts of grace. And in every single Christian, he places a gift of God's grace. Now, I want you to imagine something. I imagine, imagine that somebody gave you a gift, and the gift they gave you was kind of for a reason. It had a purpose. I mean, someone came, and they, they gave you a gift. So say you get a new home, and they bring you a housewarming gift. You're at the party, and they bring you this. And you're, you're kind of excited. You know, you're going to open the gift, and if you have a gift, I think you're... How many of you, when you get gifts, tend to open them? Okay, good, good. So I, I do, that's, how I, that's how I roll, anyways. Um, now, when it comes to opening gifts, there's two kinds of people. There's the people that open them very slowly. They actually take the tape very carefully, and they try to tear the paper. And when they're done, they fold the paper up, maybe to reuse it or something. Any, anybody that opens gifts, just don't be, don't be ashamed. Don't be shy. Okay, great, great. And then there's the rest of us. And the rest of us just, you know, kind of, how many of you just rip, just rip it open? Yeah, that, that's my style. So, so you get your gift, and you tear it open, you know, and, you, and, you, and then when you get a gift, ooh, when you get a gift and it's in a box, what's the next question you ask? Is, is it, is the, that the box it came in, right? Is it this, this, this be, you know, beautiful hedging, hedge trimmer, hedging shears. So, you know, somebody gives me this. And I open it, I see it. Like, okay, is that what it is? Yeah, that's what it is. So now I've got this, I've got this amazing gift, these, these beautiful hedging shears, right? And so, this is a gift with a purpose. Because what they've noticed is, as I'm moving into this new home, there's a need. And, and here's the issue. Um... This person has noticed the yard, and they, they've noticed that it, it's a little bit overgrown. Here's another image for you. Maybe, maybe it's looking a bit like this. Uh, and so they're giving a gift, but it's not just a random gift. It's a gift that has a purpose. It's a gift that has a function. We're going to kind of be walking back and forth between spiritual gifts and hedging. Okay? Is everybody okay with that? We're gonna, you know, and, and so we're going to talk about spiritual gifts and an actual physical gift and getting a spiritual message here that I think will speak to your hearts. So... When you get a gift, you, you open it, and you say, somebody says, you're going to love it. You're going to love this gift. So you open it, you go, oh, yeah, there it is. I've, I've got it unwrapped, and I see what it is. Now, I've got this gift. I've now unwrapped it, all right? How is my yard looking? Any better yet? No, it's still in the box. Now, I have the gift. I just haven't done anything with it. 
Start making a spiritual connection in the back of your mind, right? You can have a spiritual gift from God, but if you still got it wrapped or boxed, it's really not accomplishing its intended purposes. The living God of the universe has placed a specific and powerful gift in you, maybe more than one. I find that for most people, they'll have one, two, or three different spiritual gifts. That God has actually spiritually placed in them when they became a Christian, unleashed in them, but they have to unwrap it, they have to figure out how to use it, but God is the giver of the gift, or the gifts. And I hope for all of you, if you're a Christian, that you even now in your mind are saying, well, I think I know what my gift is. Now, if you say, well, what are all the different possible gifts? We have actually an assessment tool that we use here at Shoreland that we've developed that's going to be, they're, they're going to be doing, anybody who doesn't know what their spiritual gifting is can go right in the Connections Cafe right after the service, and we're doing the survey tool right then, or you can talk to the Connection Center and you can do it online. But I challenge you, if you don't know what your gifting is, you want to know more about spiritual gifts, go right to the Connections Cafe and be, it's like a, just a short little time of a little teaching and then to do the assessment tool. But there's ways to find out. I'm not going to go into all the gifts in this sermon. I'm just telling you that there's some, some kind of wonderful gift that God has put in you and he wants to use it in an amazing way. Listen to these words from 1 Corinthians 12. And actually in, in the New Testament, in 1 Corinthians chapters 12, 13, and 14, and 1 Corinthians are all about spiritual gifts. And a lot of people know 1 Corinthians 13, oh, that's the love chapter. There's a lot of times it's right at weddings, love is patient, love is kind. Actually, it's right in the middle of a discussion of spiritual gifts because it's about how we have to love each other while we're using our gifts. It's actually part of a discussion of spiritual gifts. But we read this in 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 6. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. This is actually Trinitarian theology, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Watch this now. Different kinds of gifts with the same Spirit. There's the Holy Spirit who distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord, the same Jesus who unleashes his service within us. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. God the Father, Son, Holy Spirit are part of this process of giving gifts, of instilling gifts within us. When I became a Christian at 15 years old, God placed a gift in me. I've learned over time, probably, actually probably three gifts. But one of those gifts is a gift of teaching. But I'm 15 years old, and I'm, I, was, I had an 0.75 that year in high school. I was flunking out. Um, didn't really look like a teacher, uh, but, but there was this gift that God placed in me. And the youth pastor had this way of watching the, the middle school and high school students. And when he would see a gift in them, he would try to grow that gift and unleash that gift. It was a beautiful thing. And he saw in me a gift of teaching. I think, I think he thought to himself, this guy talks a lot, um, <laughs> kind of fast. Maybe he could be a teacher. I don't know. But he, he saw that in me. And so he actually came to me and he said, and I'd been a Christian maybe five or six months. It was going to be my first Easter as a Christian. And he came to me and he said, hey, Kevin, I got a question. Would you be willing to share a testimony at the Easter sunrise service? And I said, sure, I'd love to. He said, okay, great. And I said, what's a testimony? <laughs> I, I didn't grow up in the church. I, I honestly didn't know what a testimony was. But he said, would you like to do it? I'm like, sure. I was like, I was game for anything. So he says, well, testimony is you're just going to get up in front of people at the Easter sunrise service, and you're going to talk about what you were like before you were a Christian, and then how you became a Christian, and how God is changing you. And just do like 10 to 12 minutes. Just, tell, just talk about that. I'm like, sure. So I went there for the Easter sunrise service. There's about 1,500 to 2,000 people there in this big, giant, you know, they call it the Arboretum, this you know, beautiful worship place. And I got up and spent about 10 to 12 minutes, and I just told my testimony, my story of coming to Jesus. And he said to me afterwards, he said, did that like make you nervous or uncomfortable to be up there talking in front of all those people? And I said, should it? <laughs> and he said, aha, uh -huh, maybe there's something here. And he actually, at 16 years old, he started training me to be a teacher, how to teach God's word. He had me start teaching high school students. I was still in high school. I was a junior in high school. But I praise God for someone who challenged me to find out what my gift was and to start to use it. And it was almost a decade before I became a pastor and was like, you know, it was my job. But I would teach every chance I would get. And I would spend hours studying and preparing, writing notes. That's just some, and, and I just, I felt, I felt the Holy Spirit and the presence of God fill me and pour through me every time I used that gift. That's the beauty of spiritual gifts. God pours through you, but then through that, God blesses the world and takes that what is, which is kind of chaotic and messy and overgrown and makes it something beautiful for the glory of Jesus. And I got to experience that as a 16-year-old kid. I thank God for that. 
Now, I actually believe that this week, you now we're in the Supernatural series. This is the last week of our Supernatural series. And some of you are thinking, well, we've, talk, we've talked about miracles and angels and heaven and healing. How does spiritual gifts fit into the Supernatural you know, series? I actually believe that of all the things we've talked about, this is probably the most supernatural of all of them. Because if every single Christian would discover their gift that God has given to them and would grow that gift and use it for the glory of God, it would change our lives, our homes, our schools, our workplaces, our neighborhoods, our community, our nation, and our world. Could you imagine if the thousands of people who call Shoreline Church their church home were actually living out with the God-given gifts they have, a Jesus lifestyle where they are loving and serving and sharing and helping and exercising faith and intercessory prayer and all these different gifts, if we were just living that every day in the community that we live in, it would be radically transformational. That's what God wants to see happening. I believe this is one of the most supernatural things we can talk about. Every follower of Jesus should discover their unique gifting. You should discover what your gift is because we each have a gift. I'll give you a few examples of some of the spiritual gifts. What's interesting is that most of these gifts we're all supposed to do in some way, but some people do it in a more more intense way. So there's a spiritual gift of mercy. There's a spiritual gift of mercy or compassion. Now, if you're a Christian, are you supposed to be a kind, merciful, compassionate person? What's the answer? Yes, we all show mercy if we're Christians. But, But some people... Excuse me, some people have a unique gift of mercy where they feel at a different level and they care at a different level. We're all supposed to be merciful, but some people have a spiritual gifting of mercy and they get involved in compassion ministries and they go to retirement centers and care for people that are shut in and they they do all kinds of merciful things in the church and in the community for the glory of Jesus. That's that's one of the gifts. Uh, There's a gift of generosity. Is every Christian supposed to be generous? What's the answer? Yes, but some Christians... They have a gifting of generosity. They, they love to give. They look at their resources and go, how can I give more toward the work of Jesus? That's a unique gifting, and they have to develop and use that gift for the glory of Jesus. Some Christians have the gift of outreach or evangelism. Now, is every Christian supposed to shine the light of Jesus? What's the answer? Yes, all of us. But some Christians have this unique ability to, to share at a, at a greater level with more frequency, with It's kind of a real natural way of sharing Jesus. That's just the way that God has made them. So there's lots of different gifts, and some people have them in a more kind of a more robust way. Did you know there's a spiritual gift called the gift of discernment? It's called discernment of spirits. Now, is every Christian supposed to be wise and discerning? What's the answer? Yes, but some Christians have this gift of discernment. And and here's how it works. A person with this gift looks at a situation And they can say right away, just by looking at it, God is at work here. They sense the presence of God. Or, boy, this is of human origin and there's something, there's a problem. This is about about people, not about God. Or they can say, this is demonic and evil and really bad. And they know like that. And some of you have that gift and you don't even know you have it. You just know, boy, I'm so judgmental. I just think, well, something's wrong here. Well, maybe it's not that. Maybe it's that God's giving you discernment, but you have to grow that gifting. My wife, Sherry, has the gift of discernment, and it's incredibly valuable, because I don't, I, I think I've got wisdom, but I don't have discernment, but Sherry will sometimes say to me, Kevin, be very careful. There's something going on here, and this is not from the Lord. I've learned to just trust her, because she's, it's never been wrong in our 30 plus years of marriage. It's a spiritual gifting that she's developed through the years. There's lots of different gifts, and so <coughs> you get to kind of discover your gift, and what is it? So, so you get a gift. And you unwrap it. Now, next thing, learn about it. You go, this is amazing. So I've got the instructions here for this. So I, I, you know, I, can, I can get this great tool, this great you know, he, you know, hedging tool, and I can read all the instructions. Okay, you know, the, the blade moves this fast. And here's how you oil it. And here's how you take care of it. And, here's how, and I can know how, the, you know how the motor runs. And I can read all about it. So now I've got the gift. I've unwrapped the gift. I've read all the instructions. How's my yard looking? Not very good. Now, first service, somebody said, worse, because you're taking all this time. And you said, I thought, good point. (laughs) That was kind of, you know, it's participation time. Uh, So, (coughs) excuse me. And I already have a cough drop, so don't, somebody's going to run up here. I've got one here. Um, but, But you can say, well, now I've got the gift. I've opened the gift, and I've read about it, and I've studied it, and I know how it works. But the problem is, I haven't done anything. 
And I think sometimes it's like that for people in their spiritual journey. They might know what their spiritual gift is. And they might even know how it works. And maybe, yeah, I used it about 10 years ago for a while, but I just haven't been involved lately and I haven't been using my gift. It may be time to say, now I need to re-engage and use the gift that God has given me for his glory. The problem is, even though, even though I own the gift and even though I know how it works, my yard still looks like this. Okay, it's still a mess. It's still, it's still chaotic. And so God is saying to us, listen, it's not just about knowing your gift. It's not just about knowing how your gift works. It's about using your gift. Listen to these words from 1 Corinthians 12. In 1 Corinthians 12, 1, the Apostle Paul says, now about the gifts of the Spirit, my brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You shouldn't be unaware about how the gifts of the Spirit work and what they are. Verse seven says this, now to each one, every believer, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. Take note of that. It's for the common good. The gifts aren't given to make me look good. The gifts are given to make us look good as a body and to make Jesus look good to the world. That's why God gives the gifts, for the common good. To one, there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. To still another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same spirit. As he distributes them to each one, just as he determines. God decides who gets what gift. Because God's looking at the crazy world we live in and what he wants to do in our world. And he says, I'm gonna give you the right gift, the right tool, the right thing that fits you and that fits reaching out and caring for our world and strengthening the church to be all that God wants it to be. Now, it's super exciting to get a gift. And it's fun to open the gift. And some people find it fascinating. Some of you are the people that you read all the instructions. Some of you are like, nope. And, but, but some of you read, you know, but it's great to know how the gift works. But ultimately... We have to do something with the gift that God has given. When you have discovered your gift, you need to learn all you can and discover how it works for the glory of God. Now I know how it works, okay? And then try it and discover that it really works. So you go out to your yard and you can know how it works and you go out there and after you've worked for a while, you look at your yard and you get something like this. <laughs> God's beautiful. Elephants, you know, or less, maybe not your first try, okay? Maybe not. But the, maybe not. But, but, the, but the point is, if you want to go from something just messy and chaotic to something beautiful and glorifying to God, you ready for this radical insight? You have to try it. The first time I got up to teach, I'm sure if I look back now at that testimony I gave, I would have said, well, that, that was fine for a 15-year-old kid who didn't grow up in the church and who didn't know what to say. I just shared from my heart. But I actually believe I've been a pastor now for decades. I'm still learning to use the gift of teaching more and more for God's glory. I still read books about teaching and communicating, trying to sharpen and develop that gift. I want to honor God with the gifts that he's given to me so they continue to grow and they continue to develop. And that's the way your gift is. But you can't discover your gift and really use it for God's glory without taking a risk and trying. And, and so discover your gift. And again, we've got this, this you know, time right now, you can do this assessment tool right after the service, or you can go online and do it, and it'll help give you some direction. And if you want to then meet with a leader of the church and, and just have a conversation about, okay, well, how can I use this gift, and how can I develop this gift? We are here to help anyone who says, okay, I've taken the assessment tool. I know what my primary, you know, one or two or three gifts are. How might I use these for God's glory? We, we will have people sit down with anybody who wants to do that and talk and pray with you. We have a discipleship team here and lots of pastors that would love to be part of that journey with you. We've done that in the past. It's been an amazing time with people. Now, I love Romans chapter 12, which also talks about spiritual gifts and how the Apostle Paul is just so practical. Listen, listen to these words. If you're reading in your Bible, you've got to underline the action part or if you're watching on the screen, just follow along. The Apostle Paul says, we have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. So God, by the grace, the grace of his spirit has given us each a gift or gifts. So listen to what he says. If your gift is prophesying, I love this, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. He says, then to do it. He says, if your gift is serving, what do the next two words say? Read the next two words together. You ready? Yes, then serve. Isn't that great? <laughs> if you have the gift of serving, okay, here's the secret ingredient. You ready? Brace yourselves. You have the gift of serving? Then serve. Incredible, right? 
And he goes on like that. If it is teaching, what? Then teach. If it is to encourage, then what? Then give encouragement. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. What the Bible says is, if God's given you a gift, use it. If you have the gift of teaching, so where should I teach? It might be with, with, uh, with, with the Cubbies or with the Iwana kids on Wednesday nights. It might be Sunday morning with, teenage, with middle school or high school kids. It might be a growth group. It might be an adult Bible study. It might be out in, your, in the community where you're teaching but using the gifts God has given you for his glory. But if your gift is teaching, find a place to teach. That, that's why we, I can't really kind of walk through each person where you, what your gift is and where to use it right now, but we can do that one-on-one. -on -one. We can talk with people and say, help me discover my gifts and now how do I use them for the glory of God? But we're, we're called to use our gifts. And I just want to share a few examples as I look around Shoreline Church. I could, I could stand here for the next five hours and tell you stories about people at Shoreline who are using their gifts for the glory of Jesus and how God's changing, you know, how, how God is bringing things beautiful out of their lives. One, one person I think of is a person with the spiritual gift of leadership. And actually, Sean Stroud, who's sitting right here, Sean Stroud, when he and Amy came to Shoreline Church, he was a colonel in the army, and he came to Shoreline and was involved in serving with the military ministry, and he was just kind of coming, bringing some soldiers to church and serving the military ministry, and just involved here as a volunteer, just serving, using his gifts of leadership. And my wife Sherry came to me one day and she said, Kevin, have you met Sean and Amy Stroud? And I said, I haven't met them yet. She said, well, I, she said, in her discernment gift, she said, I think there's a lot of leadership in him that God might be doing something here. So I said, well, I need to meet him. But some little time went by, I still hadn't met him yet. And so we're, we're here in, you know, in the church, I hadn't met him, but all of a sudden, we're Sherry and I are traveling through, uh, making a connection through Denver, and we're going to our gate to make our connection to come back to Monterey, and Sherry says to me, Kevin, Kevin, over at the gate, right there, that couple I've been telling you about, Sean and Amy Stroud, that's them. I had to go to Denver to meet somebody who goes to Shoreline Church. <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so we walk over to, to chat, and we start chatting a little bit. He just had a great time visiting. And, and I got talking to Sean. I said, so Sean, what's your, you know, how long are you going to be in the military? He says, well, either a couple more years or maybe a lot, a lot of years, but you know, maybe at least a couple more years. And I said, well, if you weren't in the military, I said, what would you do with your life? And this is what he said. He said, I just want to spend the rest of my life serving Jesus and serving his church. Now, I'm not discerning, but I was like, aha, because <laughs> Sean is not one of our pastors, if you don't know, and, and, and giving, giving great leadership on our staff team. But, but Sean was here at Shoreline using his leadership gifts to glorify Jesus as a volunteer a long time before he became a pastor here. We spent two years while he was in Korea, back and forth on video conferencing, just talking and praying and seeing what would it look like if you used, took these gifts that God has given you and used them in a church setting. It's been amazing for Shoreline Church. But God's taking those gifts and unleashing them, and it's a beautiful thing. Uh, Patrice, who's a part of Shoreline Church, who's part, part of our leadership team at the very beginning of our church. Patrice has the gift of intercessory, intercessory prayer. She loves to pray. She has a powerful prayer life. Did you know that intercession is one of the spiritual gifts? Are we all called to pray? What's the answer? Yes, but some people have this intense intercessory gifting where they pray in a more intense, more consistent, more powerful way. And Patrice, many Sunday mornings, will be right over there praying with people after the services. But I also know all through the week, she's praying for me and our family and for the Shoreline family. She exercises the ministry of intercessory prayer. I can tell you about another person, another military person who's been part of Shoreline, came to Shoreline. This is somebody who's in a high level of leadership in the military, began growing in their faith, just grew in their faith a lot while they were here. And then they were sent off to the other, another part in the world. But this person has the spiritual gift of encouragement. Do you know that encouragement is a spiritual gift? It's listed as one of the gifts. You say, well, is every Christian supposed to be encouraging? What's the answer? Yes, but some people have an unusually passionate heart and they're strategically encouraging. I would tell you that this person who now is on the other side of the planet, who hasn't really been at Shoreline for almost half a year, but they're probably in the top three or four people in my life that encourage me. So how does that happen? They're on the other side of the planet. Well, they watch our service every Sunday online. And almost on a weekly basis or every other week, I'll get a letter. Hey, here's what was really neat in the service, and I want to affirm this. And they have such a gift of encouragement. When I see their name pop up in my email, I'm like, I got to open that one and read it, because it's always going to be a week. You know, sometimes you see a name pop up, and you're like, I'm going to wait on that one. And uh, it's going to be kind of like some coming at you. And sometimes you're like, oh, I want, you know, they jump way ahead of me. Like, that's going to be, this is something that just is always encouraged. But it's not like random, silly stuff. They're looking at what's going on. They're saying, I love this, and I love the way you did this, and this was handled so well. And it just lifts my spirits. That's somebody using their spiritual gifts. 
There's, there was two young girls today, there's somewhere between like 10 and 12 years old, who were meet, met with us before the service. So this is early this morning. At 7.45, we met in the Connections Cafe with part of the staff and prayed for all of you and prayed for the service. And then over here, we met with the worship team and all of, our, all of our program people, camera people and switcher people. And there's these two girls, 10 to 12 years old, and they're, they're, they were serving on our team today, doing you know, camera and switching, like making the switches on the screen and stuff for online, for those that are online. Hello, there's, there's a couple little girls making all that happen today. You see, gift of service. Are, are all Christians supposed to serve? What's the answer? Yes. yes, but some people have a calling to certain service ministries. And these young girls are using their gifts to bless people today. Isn't that beautiful? I could go on and on and on and tell you stories like that. But what if all of us were to discover what our gift is, unwrap it, see what it is, know how it works, and read the instructions, and then actually use it for the glory of Jesus? In the church, in our homes, at our schools, in our workplace, in the community, around the world. We've got to learn to celebrate our gift for the glory of Jesus, to celebrate the gift he's given. 1 Corinthians 12, 26 says this. Talking about the church, all the parts of us functioning together. It says, if one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. What's the Apostle Paul saying? When you're part of the church, we're all connected together as the body of Christ. So that when one part of your body hurts, your whole body kind of hurts. When you're feeling good, all of you is feeling good. Well, he says, as a church, we, we're connected together. So here's the thing. What you do matters. The health of Shoreline Church will be directly connected to people using their spiritual gifts. I spent six years studying this topic. My doctoral program was all about how do you have a church that's built on the gifts of all of God's people and not just on a couple pastors. Because we are the church and the health of the church is every member of the body knowing their gift and using it for the glory of God. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 10 to 11, we read this. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received, whatever your spiritual gift is, to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its varied form. That word grace is charis, the charismata, the gifts of grace. Use that in whatever form God's given it to you. If anyone speaks, they should do it as, he who, as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. That's God's desire. A strong, healthy, vibrant church where all the members are connected together. And, and so if you look and say, you know what, I, I'm a Christian. And here's the thing. If I, if I were to say to you, okay, if you're a Christian, raise your hand. And then I said, now, do you have a spiritual gift? Or are you using it? You should also raise your hand. If somebody says, well, I'm a Christian, but I don't have a spiritual gift. Doesn't work that way. If you are a Christian, you have a spiritual gift. You might say, I haven't opened it. I haven't discovered it. I'm not using it, but I have it. And, and I think God today is saying to us in a supernatural way, if we want to change the world for Jesus, let's all get in the game. Let's all discover our gift, see how it works, and then start to use it for the glory of Jesus. To live with daily delight that the God of the universe would work through, through you to bless people, to bless his church, and to bless the world. That is an amazing thing. Some of the greatest moments of my life have been just, just that sense that when you realize that God is in you by his Holy Spirit, and he wants to pour through you to be a blessing to others. And finding out what your gifting is and growing in that gift and using it for God's glory. There are few things in life more beautiful and more powerful. So I wanna, I wanna challenge you as a pastor. I wanna exhort you. Give you my, my most, my strongest invitation to say, I will discover what my gift is. If I'm not sure, I'm gonna go right now when the service is done, right in the Connections Cafe, pack that place out full of people. Or I'm gonna go online when I get home and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this, use this tool to find it. And then I'm gonna contact the church and say, can I meet with someone and just talk about how I can grow and use my gifting? We'll meet with you one-on-one -on -one, or if you're a couple, one, -on one with two. We'll talk with you, we'll pray with you, we'll help you any way we can because we wanna see you realize all that God wants to do in and through you. And, and I, I just wanna encourage you to say, God, 
if you've given me this gift and, and you want to bring order and beauty and meaning to life through something you've put in me, whether it's serving or encouragement or, or whether it's intercessory prayer, whatever it is, God, I'm here. Lord Jesus, we pray together right now that you would fill us to overflowing. Thank you, oh God, that when we put our faith in Jesus, he moves in and he brings a housewarming gift when he comes and lives within us of one or more spiritual gifts. God, help us have the, the, the courage and the curiosity and the commitment to actually discover our gifting. Help us have the diligence and, and, and discipline to, to, to learn how that gift works and what it can do, how you can bring beauty to the world through our lives. And then, oh God, give us the consistent faithfulness to use that gift. I wanna pray, God, it's just on my heart right now. If there's people here who know what their gifts are and they've used their gifts in the past a lot, but they've just kind of for weeks or months or years, they've just been on hold and haven't been using their gifting. I pray that you would call them in a fresh new way to use their gifts for the glory and the sake of Jesus. We pray this in his name. And everyone said, amen. amen.